Here's some questions that have to deal with exponential functions. The first one is graphing. So they want us to graph this function. Let me just throw a graph on there. So uh, they want me to graph this function and tell me how it uh, is different than a normal graph uh, when they compare it to a normal one. Well, um, with exponential functions, the problem with that is that this is sort of your normal. And so I want to compare this function to this function, just the basic one. So really, the only difference is this thing up there. That thing there, and for an exponential function, this is where you'd have all your A stuff. If I were using this sort of base, I'd put A, and then um, 3 halves to the uh, Bx minus C plus D. So if I'm looking for transformations, that's sort of how it would look. So I want to know what slot that 1 is in, and it looks to be in the C spot. And the C spot, anything that's there, is moving the graph to the right or to the left by a certain amount. This one's going to be moving the graph to the right one. And so based on, if I'm looking at this as the base function, and this is a transformed one, then the graph is going to be moving one to the right. I can also put a uh, um, table of values in. So if I just look at this first one, if I put a 0 in for x, y comes out to be um, 1. Anything 0 is 1. If I put a 1 in for x, that'll be 3 halves to the 1. It'll just be 1.5. If I put a 2 in, that'll be uh, 3. It'll be 9 over 4, or 2.25. Maybe I'll put a negative 1 in for good measure. Negative 1 in, that would be 2 thirds, or 0.67-ish. And then I could graph those points. And that's just of this base one here. So that would be of the just the 3 halves to the x. So it would be 0 and 1. There's a point. Uh, 1 and 1.5, right there. 2 and 2.25, right about there. Negative 1 and 0.67. So right about there. So it looks to me like the graph is looking like that. And that's this base one. Now, this graph here, the transform one, maybe we'll do this one in red, has to be the same thing, just moved over one to the right. And so the y values would be the same, it's just the x values, I'm going to move one to the right. I could do a table of values for those two. And the y values would be all the same, 0.67, it's just that all of these are going to be moved 1 to the right. So this would be a 1, this would be a 2, this would be a 3, and that would be 0. So 1, 1 would be there, uh, 2 and 1.5 would be about there. See how it's sort of following? 3 and 2.25 would be there, 0 and 0.67 would be about there. And so this graph is going to look something like that. All right, hopefully that helps you with that. Now, Here's a question where they ask us to graph a piecewise function. And all that means is that for different uh, uh, domain or different, yeah, different domain or different values of x, the function is different. So rather than being like a linear function for the whole thing, uh, they chop that up and say, well, only for part of that is it linear. And then the other part, it might do something else, like this might, might be a quadratic. Or this one down here might be an absolute value upside down or something. So um, it, it, you just have to look at the domain and figure out what's happening in that particular domain. So for the first part, let's look at this one. And they say if x is less than negative 2, so anything this way from negative 2, the graph looks like this. Okay? <coughs> so what I can do is I can plug in some x values and solve for y. So if I plug a negative 3 in for x, let me let me erase this stuff down here. If I plug in a negative 3 for x, I'll get e to the negative, negative 3 uh, minus 4. Okay, so that'll be e to the positive 3 minus 4. And I have to figure out what that comes out to. Uh, calculator.
Okay, where's my E to the button? Here we go. So E E to the power of three, right? And then minus four. That gives me uh, 16, about 16. So this would be 16 right there. If I plug a negative four in, four, uh, minus four, I get 50. Oh, I'm gonna start getting real huge numbers here. Anyway, so negative three, it's 16, so I'll be way up here somewhere. My graph's not good. Why don't I make these 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50? So negative three is 16. That'd be about here. And negative four is 50. Negative four right about there. Okay, so from negative two onward, and I guess I could put other numbers uh, in here, but I think that what's happening with the graph, uh, yeah, I think what's happening with the graph is it's looking something like this. But I have to stop that pattern right there because that, uh, that's only good for x values less than 2. Then for x values in between negative 2, uh, including negative 2 and 1, not including 1, then this is my pattern. So negative 2 plus 3 would be 1, negative 1 plus 3 would be 2, 0 plus 3 would be 3. So at negative 2, um, my y value is 1. So from wherever I'm at there, it just sort of jumps to that point. Um, I don't know if it jumps. I th think they probably would put a circle at the end of this one, indicating that it's not there. And then they put a darkened one there. There wouldn't be a, sorry. There wouldn't be a line in between them. They'd put a circle here indicating it doesn't include that, and then they'd put a filled in dot there, meaning that it does include that. Okay, negative one and two is there, and zero and three is right there. So during that point, right up until here, and it can't include one, right? It doesn't include one. So I'd put a circle there indicating it doesn't include it. Then, <laughs> For all values greater than 1, I get this x squared thing. So 1 squared is 1, uh, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared 9, 4 squared 16. So uh, for 1, it would be 1, and 2 would be 4. Oh, no, no, no. Shoot, I forgot that these values are 30, 40, 60. Hopefully you're getting the idea anyway. Piecewise function, you just graph each particular thing separately. If, this, if these values were 1 over here and 2 and 3, it'd be 1 there, and then 2 would be 4 up there, 3 would be 9, be way up here, and it'd be looking like a quadratic till it gets to that point. Okay, hopefully that helps you with that one. Now, the last question has to do with an exponential function right there. And they say uh, where x is the number of years after 1995. Okay, so find the number of alternative in 1998. So how many years after 1995 is that? That's three years after. So I'd figure out the value of the function a when x is three. So 246, 855, 1.0931 to the third. Then if they want to know how many there are in 2010, 2010 minus 1995, I think that'd be 15 years. I do the same thing, but I put in a 15 there and a 15 there. Um, let me just uh, do the one with a 3 on the calculator to make sure it works. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 5, 5, bracket, 1.0931, bracket, to the third, go. So it looks like there's 3, 2, 2. 419.7, probably can't be 0 0.7 of a car, so I'd probably just round that up to 322,420 cars. Hopefully that helps with those exponential function questions.